Very quickly, I want you to turn your Bible speak, uh, with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Thank God for the various men and women of God that have gone ahead. Um, uh, phenomenal time. Maybe I'll make a few references to them uh, later. Uh, maybe even just now, I think I had, I tried to keep in tune with what is happening. I had uh, uh, the young apostle, Edu Spitfire, real prayer machine and shook the house. May your fire continue to burn. I believe it was uh, Pastor Ame Amana. Well, is he still here? Yeah, he, I mean, came with the, uh, uh, with the grace of an elder to tell us you can spit fire, but you have to keep the fire, you know, uh, with character. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, Bishop, God bless you. God bless you. You know, uh, your, your, your garments can be deceptive. <laughs> you know, it's not about the title, it's about the mantle. Yeah, and he taught us about priesthood. Tonight I'm going to share some thoughts with you. And essentially, I'm going to be talking... Uh, it, uh, We'll read the scriptures and we'll go into it, and I'll, I'll tell you what we'll be talking about. It says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 9 to 11, All you beasts of the field, come to devour. All you beasts in the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are ignorant. They are dumb dogs. They cannot back. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Look at the next person to you say, wake up. Yes, they are greedy dogs which never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his own gain from his own territory. And look very quickly with me in the book of Luke 22, verse 31, and Matthew chapter 26, verse 41 to 45. Sometimes if you only read from the Old Testament, that doesn't satisfy, you know, some people. Uh, and I think it's important to, you know, show the balance in Scripture, they, you know that the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And then he says in verse 31 of Luke 22. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. I always say jokingly that uh, if I were Simon, I would tell Jesus, ah, he asked for me, you should have told him I'm not at home. Or answer him. But then he says this later on in Matthew 26, verse 41. He says, watch and pray, lest you do what? Enter into temptation. Tell your neighbor, say, watch and pray. Amen. Lest you enter. Which means there is a season that you want to avoid entering into. Then he says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then he came to his di disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping? Ask your neighbor, say, are you still sleeping? And resting, behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Father, Lord, we pray by your Spirit that tonight you will open up our eyes, you will open our hearts, but more so, you will open up our destinies. I, I come from a medical background. I, I trained as a medical doctor, um, even though uh, uh, a, few, a few weeks ago I was asked on the plane from Houston on the way back, the air hostess said, I heard you are a doctor. Uh, I said, are you a doctor? I said, yes. She says, yes. Are you a medical doctor? I said, yes. I said, will you be willing to be called upon in an emergency? I said, no. Because I haven't practiced in uh, 33 years. But the, 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 the point I'm trying to make uh, uh, with this is that God uses all our training. And there's a reason why I believe God took me through that route. And one of the reasons is a systematic, when I say systematic, as in there's a particular way we think. And uh, in the short while, I'm going to share with you some thoughts. And you see, in medicine, we read very big books, Moore's Pathology, Gray's Anatomy. They are, they are frightening. And you have a lot of information to keep. So you have to come about to a system of memory. So we use what we call acronyms or mnemonics. So I'm going to give you some acronyms on demonic so that you will not forget tonight. If I were to give a title to tonight's 
word of admonition, I will call it, are you still sleeping? Look at your neighbor on the left and the right. Ask them, say, are you still sleeping? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't say just look at them. I said, ask them, are you still sleeping? <laughs> are you still sleeping? And I will, I will show you why in a short while because I believe very strongly that God has called every one of us to the ministry of the watchman. Now, you might have heard about it. You might have had teachings about it, you know, numerous times. But please, don't sleep on this. I'm going to share with you, as the Lord permits me, first of all, about the mandate of the watchman. Then I will talk about the responsibilities of the watchman intercessor. I'm going to make an attempt to, to look at it from five different perspectives. One, the sensitivity of the watchman. Two, the surveillance of the watchman. Three, the strength of the watchman. Four, the seasons of the watchman. And then five, the scope of the watchman. Why is it important to talk about the watchman? Well, some of you may look at me and say, well, this is a conference on prayer. If you look at scripture and you look at the things that Jesus spoke about, you will find that there is hardly a time that he talks about prayer that he doesn't say watch and pray. Tell your neighbor, say watch and pray. You know, I believe it was, uh, um, I'm married to perhaps maybe the most beautiful woman in the world, at least in my own sphere. <laughs> maybe here in Makodi, it will be past, uh, Reverend Dina <laughs> for Apostle Larome, <laughs> as in the, the most beautiful woman to uh, Apostle Larome. Now, the point is this. I started dating her in 1997. <laughs> maybe some people were born in that, in that time. And at the time we were dating, there was no uh, email, phone. How many people know that of that time? When you make a phone call, international call, I was in England, she was in Nigeria. And we, we just met two weeks, and then I, was, I had to go back to uh, um, 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 England. So our courtship was over the phone. But I was a young man earning very little. So all my money was going on international calls. And so I then, without, I, I then garnered wisdom and said, well, your brother has a fax machine. We, I have a fax machine. And so can we be communicating by fax? So our me method of communication was by fax. And so because our love was fresh, yeah, I would send, not joking, 28 pages of fax. She will reply with 30. <laughs> and then <laughs> I would give her 32. She will now reply with 34. <laughs> now, up to the point where her brother's fax exploded. <laughs> he stopped working. And then the brother called and said, I thought you said your whatever is a pastor. What is he doing? Lord? <laughs> now, the point I'm trying to make with this is, listen to this. This is, is very important. Can you imagine me sending the 28 pages and I did not get a response? And then sending another 30, and I did not get a response. And then sending another 40, there, that's, that's not a relationship. Do you know, most of us, this is the kind of posture we have with God. It is about how many hours we pray. It is about how, how I mean, how much we shake and how much, and don't, don't, don't mess me, don't, I mean, don't, don't, don't make that mistake. I, I try to pray long hours. But the point I am trying to make is that prayer is not prayer until it is a dialogue. Prayer is not a monologue, which means it is you can pray and shakata, bata, bata, bata. And if you don't hear anything, what are you praying? So what I'm going to talk to you about essentially is to tell you that prayer, my dimension of prayer, what I want to talk is about listening prayer. And you will find that, you know, Jesus did more listening than he did talking. In fact, if you look at the scriptures in the book of Luke chapter 2, I believe it was uh, somewhere around verse 49 or so. The Bible says when he was in the temple, in the synagogue with the elders, that he did what? The Bible says he sat, he listened, and he asked questions. Most of us today would rather stand, speak, and give answers. It was 
my mentor, he led me to the Lord, you know, um, so that was 1990. He's a professor of cardiothoracic surgery. And this, this man, don't mess with him. You think he has intellect. That man fasted for two years, breaking only with banana and granite for two years. So he was more or less a spirit. Is. And I remember then he said something to me. He said, uh, Shola, God told me that this is who you are going to be, but I will not tell you everything. And so, I, I, it, it, you know, so I was trying to, I was anxious. I said, so this God told you, uh, how did you hear? Because me, I've been praying. And I told him, I prayed three hours, this and that. He said, he doesn't, he doesn't talk much. He says he listens more. Do you know, it has taken about 30-something years for me to find out what he's talking about. Because these days, I listen more. When you talk about the watchman, the Bible, the, the Bible talks about, it says, oh, well, let me give you these quick definitions. It says, a watchman is a person who keeps guard over a building at night to protect it from fire, vandals, or thieves. It is a sentinel on the city wall and on the high tops. I know you know all the various definitions and all of that. Apostle has, and, and his uh, pastors and, and uh, you know, uh, team have done a phenomenal job over time. But I want to tell you some things from a little experience. What are the responsibilities of a watchman? The first thing I want to talk about is sensitivity. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, you need to be sensitive. You see... When, we're, when, when you are a watchman with God, you are, the, the, the watch is towards, you know, being sensitive to God, being sensitive to his angels, and then also being sensitive to the movement of the enemy. But you cannot be an effective prayer person without watching. What he's saying essentially is that when you are praying, don't necessarily pray with your eyes shut. Keep your eyes open. I don't mean that physically. I don't mean that literally. I am saying that as you are praying, when, we, when they say vigil, vigil doesn't mean prayer at night. It means, it means alertness. Now, let me tell you why. If you do not do that, you will miss your answers to prayers. Many of us, the thing we were praying for has already come, but we missed it. Ask Rhoda. If you look at the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 12, these people, are you talking about prayer? They prayed. He spoke about continuous prayer in one accord. Their prayer was so powerful and so strong, it released angelic activity that broke chains, tapped Peter, brought him out, and then opened the gates of, city, of the city and then told him to go. But then, the lack of watchfulness of the people who were praying locked Peter out. The angel can answer your prayer, but you can lock the prayer, the answer out. I don't know if you know the story of Rhoda. <laughs> Peter came knocking on the door. That means the answer came, and the answer was knocking. And you know what? She was so excited, she didn't open the door. Then she went to tell the people who were praying that uh, there's somebody knocking at the door, and then he said, it is who? It is Peter. He said, no, it cannot be him. The angel opened the door, they locked him out. How many people have you locked out that God sent into your life? I mean, for sake of time, I'll move on very quickly. But I will show you, you know, as, as quickly as I can that the lack of sensitivity has killed the church. Because, listen to this, I mean, if you look at even in the Old Testament, you know, if you are not sensitive, you will miss moves of God. What do I mean by that? The Bible says concerning Eli. And let me tell you something about moves of God. <laughs> the people who think that they are the owners of the move are the ones that are usually bypassed. Because God doesn't come from where we are looking from. 
And so you will see, when you look at scripture, the Bible says, who were the guys in the Pharisees and the Sadducees? The Bible says, while well, Caiaphas was high priest of this, and this so-so and so was the high priest of so-so and so, there was contention between them that they had two high priests, which is what it is like these days in church, isn't it? That the Bible says, and then while well, so-so and so, Pontius Pilate was this, and this one was uh, 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 Tetrarch of Ituria. They were talking about all the political this and all that, all the things that you, many of us will be running to Astro Rock and, and to become. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to John the Baptist, where? Not in the palace, in the wilderness. Which means God had moved. May you not miss the move of God. A new move came. God brought Samuel to the house of Eli. But you know what? He was praying, but he was not listening. The Bible says, put it this way in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 6. It says, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness. Oh God, lift up your right hand wherever you are. Say, Father, Lord, please let this curse not manifest in my life. He says, cursed is the man who, who put, puts his trust in men, who is looking for how when he gets there, he will find who will link him to somebody who can connect him to this. Who can, he says, that person will not see when good comes because he thinks God is going to come this way. And he says, that man will dwell in a patched place forever. Listen to this very carefully. You know, some of you would have studied about the God's Generals by Robert Sladen. And one of the first entries in that book, it speaks about a man called Charles Praham. So many of you would have heard about William Seymour, who started the Pentecostal, Pentecostal movement, yeah? Now, we celebrate William Seymour today, but William Seymour was, was a byword. He had his eyes, where, one of his eyes were, you know, uh, 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 was it uh, smallpox or something that had, you know, eating up the eye? There were just various things that were just not right with him. And then he had the wrong color. And but Charles Praham was the was the orchestrator of the of the main movie. He had the big stage and all of that. And and he was the one that was teaching about the Holy Ghost. But there was a problem in the time. There was racism, even though Charles Praham wasn't a racist. But he could not allow a black man in his church. So he saw the hunger of William Seymour. William Seymour. So he told William Seymour, "If you can sit outside." I will just, and just open the door a little and you can be hearing what we are saying. Now listen to this. That man that they put outside, that they gave a little door to be looking through, is the man that carried the mantle of the Pentecostal movement. It is you, believe, it is the person who is listening and sensitive to his move. Why? Because the people on the forefront of the move think they know how God moves. I, I, I am struggling whether to go deeper or to just go wide. <laughs> I, I just, so I can finish the message. Now, the, the, the point is this. Listen to this. <laughs> I mean, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 43 verse 19, Behold, I will do what? A new thing. Now it shall what? Spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. I'll make rivers. The end of NIV, I believe, means that you might not perceive it. And we can have a prayer meeting from now till three weeks time for, Lord, do a new thing. Lord, do a new thing. He said, I've sent the new thing. But he didn't come the way you thought it would. He came in a little boy called Samuel. But Samuel is not part of our denomination. But Samuel is not part of our movement. But Samuel doesn't read the books that we read.
You know, there's a scripture in the book of Job 33. It says, this is the way he puts it. He says, God speaks in one way or another. And he says, but man does not what? Perceive it. In a dream, in a... <laughs> I've worked in the prophetic ministry for a, 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 few, a couple of decades now, and I have come to understand that God seldom re repeats the same methods. So I expect him to come this way. And the times I miss God and what he's saying is when I say, no, God, you must speak through your word. The word is the central way. It is the standard. We know that you're like, oh God, oh, I'm used to you coming through vision. I'm used to, you know, when I sit like this, this is how you speak. Listen to this. I found out that man has five senses. Can I have a volunteer, somebody who can help me? Who, 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 will, who will help me? Very quick. Just one person. Thank you. So, you are not, my, my wife was here. <laughs> And she wants to pass a message on to me. There are various ways she can pass it on. So when we're amongst guests and she's trying to say, hey, 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 maybe don't eat here. <laughs> or we need to leave soon. Uh, how, how will she do it? She, she will probably use her eyes to signal. So, uh, her, so I'm not near her. Eh? So she will use her eyes. So I have to be looking. If it is a place where it's open and I can't see her, yeah, she will have to what? Use her voice. Shola, don't, let's not eat here. She will find a way to pass that across to me or something. And then if she's near me, she will do what? She will signal by, like Reverend Dina did, use her touch. But listen, I just gave you three different senses. There's another way that my wife can come and I will not even know I mean, I, and you, you, I'm expecting sight, I'm expecting this. There are times she's come behind me and she's put, put can, can you blindfold me? Okay. And I'm like, who, who's this? Who's this? You know, it's either I feel her touch, I know, oh, this is, I know what she feels like. But you know what? How I usually will catch out is the smell of her perfume. What I am saying is that, let's appreciate him. God is always wanting to speak. It is us that limit him. There are people that have stopped uh, trying to hear God by dreams and visions. And uh, there, there's also the extreme of people. Everything they dream, everything I, had, I woke up and this one dragon chased me, this one, this one. No, no, no. But listen to this. We cannot be greater than God. He, he used dreams to save Jesus. By communicating to, to Joseph. And he used that to, to show him times and seasons. So why should we throw it away? But that's not the only way. When, when God wanted to bring a new prophetic direction to, to the church, he used trance or a vision to show Peter that, look, Peter, you think you are better than me. Eat and kill. Kill and eat. And then on and on, Paul, when he wanted him to go to Macedonia, he used a night vision of what some of us might call a dream. And so, listen to this. What I want to say to you is, it is easy to keep praying and keep praying and keep praying when God has sent your fax message. In fact, let me put it this way. So, 97 was when I started dating my wife. By 98, I got my first email. So, we changed mode. It was cheaper. It didn't damage fax machines. The other problem is that when God has shifted his mode of communication, we don't change. We want to stay with the old movement until it becomes a monument. Listen to this very carefully. I am saying this with a lot of care. Why? Because there are some of us who think because God has used us for so long, we are the owners of this thing. It will surprise us that God will come in a different way and he may come in a way that offends you. 
This is what the people in the book of Acts, in Acts 2, when there was a move from heaven, when there was a rushing mighty wind, Pentecost came, what happened? The Bible says in Acts 2, 13, 15 to 16, it says, the, the uh, others mocking said, they are full of new wine. For these are not drunk. This is Peter speaking. These are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Listen to this. Revival, the move you've been praying for, may not come the way you want. And when it comes, you may mock it. Why? Because they are laughing too much. Oh, because they are shaking. What's all this? this is, oh, you, you, there should be decorum in the church. <laughs> Listen to this. These people were, were drunk, it seemed like. And the people who mocked it missed it. Surveillance. Surveillance. The first is about seeing good sensitivity, which means when God is bringing your answer to your prayer, when he's bringing your wife, when he's bringing your husband, you say, oh, he must be told that can answer. What if he is shot? Fat and have some in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> but that is the will of God for you. Oh, please, please, don't get me wrong. Please make sure you love them before you marry them. Don't say, Pastor said, some brothers will now go out on a kamakazi mission looking for. Them. I say, hey, <laughs> you heard what he said. No, that's not what I'm saying. Surveillance is the next thing, which is, you know, the ability to see when evil comes. And what is, what is this about? Listen, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1 to 3, when I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. The second responsibility of the watchman is not just uh, 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 being sensitive to know when good is coming. In fact, I would rather pay my watch night security guard. I say, instead of him, <laughs> he used to have a security guard when I was growing up many years ago, you know, and he loved, he was good at bringing good news. Ah, okay, they don't bring hamper. Ah, okay, they bring yam. Why? Because somehow, somehow, he feels that there will be a stake for him. But then my dad noticed that the guy used to sleep. And he told him, he said, he said uh, 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 Ibrahim, you didn't sleep. He said, no, I'm not asleep. Ibrahim, you didn't sleep. No, I'm not. So in the middle of the night one day, my dad was a very daring man. He crept there. The guy had bow and arrow. My dad went, snuck, collected his bow and arrow, and went upstairs. In the morning, Ibrahim was looking for bow and arrow. Looking for bow and arrow. So, a guy came out now holding bow and arrow. See, when the Bible says a strong man's goods are safe until a stronger than he comes and binds him and collects all his armor. Ask your neighbor, are you still sleeping? You see, this is the way Jesus puts it, even though he's talking about his own coming. It's important to note this. He says in the book of Matthew 24, verse 42 to, to 46, Watch therefore, for you do not know what ah, your Lord is coming. Now, it's, it's using, it's using a, 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 a negative metaphor, that of a thief, to describe his coming. But how many of you know that that is also the way, that is also the, way the thief will come when he's coming? But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have what? Watched. And not what? Allowed his house to be broken into. Many of us, our families have been broken into, our destinies have been broken into, our, our churches have been broken into because we've been praying but not watching. Therefore you also what? Be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then for sake of time, he goes up to Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, and says the same thing, similar thing. But let me, let me tell you one or two thoughts. At the beginning of the year, every year, I mean, most churches do it. You know, we had a 21-day fast or something, you know, and all that. So that's the time we're most alert. I am, at least. 
That's kind of the time God downloads the things that are coming for me. And it just so happened that at that, at that period, this, this is early this year, I first had a dream where I saw this would be the first time, well, I've had angelic encounters, but, you know, in terms of seeing an angel, and in fact, when I say seeing, I didn't even see the whole body. I saw his hand, <laughs> and I saw his movement, you know. And so I was sleeping, and he came and tapped me and did like this. I was upstairs, he took me downstairs, took me, and then took me to the door and showed me the door was open. And then he went away, like he had done his own business. And while I was looking at the door, I suddenly saw through the window that armed robbers were coming. And they were already approaching the door. And while I was, you know, I was a few meters away from there, I was thinking, what will I do? I didn't realize that one of my relatives, close relatives, was sleeping by the door. His room was by the door. So it was like, I can, I have time to run away. But if I run, they will deal with that person. So this was sometime early in January. I thought, oh yeah, you know, okay, let me just chill small. Then later I will pray this and that. You know, I've got the message. I've got the message. A week or two later, I had another dream where I saw this time the dream had progressed. The armed robbers were outside, but this time they are taking him outside, like part two. Taking him outside, and they, 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 they handcuffed him, and they were taking him towards the garage. And I saw that I was in the kitchen. I could see it, but I was looking for weapons in the kitchen, and I couldn't find There was no strength. It, the, the weapons were there, but I just could not. Until time had elapsed, I went to the other side, entered the garage. They had gone, and they had hung this person. So I got there too late. Then in my mind, I said, ah, I need to do something about this. I need to do something. So I said, pray small, small, pray small, small. Two days later, I got a phone call that this person had a stroke. When we talk about surveillance, we're talking about the fact that, listen to this, there are things God will reveal to you, listen to this, if you are not listening, you will blame him. Say, where is God now? Where is God? He spoke to you. You didn't hear it. Discernment, discerning false people. Listen to this. The, <laughs> a number of years ago, there was one notable person trying to, you know, our church is quite a notable church in the United Kingdom. So the guy came and was like, you know, had all the right things to say. And you know the interesting, I've seen him before and, you know, the guy, you know, when you, when you admire, oh, this, this guy does a few things. So I am somebody who has a heart to learn. I can learn from anybody. So we met, we're talking, and, I, you know, his foundation was very good and everything, but there was just something. I don't know if you've ever spoken to somebody, and they sound right on every front, but there's something that just doesn't sound or sit well, but I couldn't quite get it. But I found out the guy was just trying to press to come to my church and come to and press and, you know, I take my time. So I said, oh, let's take it easy. Then he would come at another and go, introduce me to this person. Can you do it? I, I know you know this. I know. I'm like, ah. you don't meet a girl the first day and then you want to get into bed with her. No. It, those are alarm bells. The moment the girl feels that she will know this person's heart is not right. And on my way out, I was leaving the person's house. I, on my way home, still ruminating over this, one of my daughters called me. She's a very sharp person, prayer-wise and whatever. She, was, she didn't know what was happening. She just came and said, Pastor, I just had a dream about you. I said, what's that? She said, I saw a white wolf approaching the church, and you stopped it at the gate. Do you know what a white wolf is? <laughs> a white wolf... Is, is, it looks like a sheep. That's what Jesus said. He says, they, they are ravenous wolves. Who do what? <laughs> Come to you in what? How many of you know that God just spoke to me? Well, God can speak to you and then the idols of your heart blocks 
You're responding to God. And say, oh, I don't. Maybe he said he will raise offering for you or something. This is where many people's ministries have died. I cut off that person. Number three, for sake of time, is strength. You see, it is one thing to be sensitive. It's another thing to, what's the word? It's another thing to have surveillance and you see the thief coming. <laughs> but it's another thing altogether. What will you do with what you see? And in this instance, in terms of that relative that I saw, I saw the arm robbers twice. I saw them carrying it. And I was looking for what to do, to, 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 to use on them. This, there's a scripture in Isaiah 28, verse 2 to 6. 2, 6, and 7. It says, Behold, the Lord has a mighty and a strong one. You'll be God's mighty and strong one. For a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and for strength, God will give strength to those who turn back the battle at their gate. If you remember, I, I, I said to you that the angel showed me that the armed robbers were at my door. But the problem was, I did not have strength to turn the battle at the gate. Now, this is where long prayers now matter. Long prayers before this one is just an exercise in the gym. Does that make sense? <laughs> long prayers, for the sake of long prayers, is just braggadocious. It is when they show you the thing. And this is, it then says, but they have also, they, they also have heard from wine and through intoxicating drink. And out of the way, the priests and the prophets have what? Heard through intoxicating drink. They have swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision and they stumble in judgment. The people that God is looking to give strength to turn the battle at the gate, the priests, the prophets, the pastors, listen to this, we are intoxicated with our positions. We are intoxicated, you know, and, and, and not just pastors. They, we are the ones that God says, things are coming to the church. Meanwhile, it's small, small, they buy your small car and we, are, we, we allow anything into the church. Time will not permit me to, to, to harp on the word intoxication. So some of us say, well, I don't drink wine. But you see, you, you are drunk with other things. And it has caused stupor and a stumbling. And then we are coming up with all sorts of visions. You know, I don't have time. Maybe whenever next time I come, I will talk to you about, you know, we are called to be governmental prophets, not political prophets. You see, there were, there were different kinds of prophets in Israel. There were Obadiah and the others were, were in the palace. And when you are in the palace, you are on the, you are on the, you are on the palace's payroll. So, your prophecy will, you, you have people who are personal prophets. So what, 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 when it, it is time for school fees, you will, find, you will get a prophecy. And sadly, we have heard. We have become prophets to politicians. Time will not permit me. Listen to this. Let's talk about men like Ray Howell, who God raised as an intercessor. He was the head of the Bible College of Wales. And in the time of, of the Second World War, when Hitler was bombing the United Kingdom and, and the various nations, the Allied nations, Howells and his students became watchmen intercessors. He gathered the students and said they are bombing London, they bombed Buckingham Palace, they bombed uh, uh, Westminster. He says, he told them, he says, we will not, they will not, what, not one bomb will fall on this school because they will, they will restrain it. And not one bomb fell on their school. Risk. How else intercession is what turned back Hitler in the battle of Dunkirk? 
It is written in history. These are men who had strength. Not, they didn't just see, but they, they went and sat in the place of prayer and turned things back. Time will not put me to talk, to talk about the likes of T. Austin Sparks or, or, or Derek Prince who turned back uh, the, the, the scourge of communism by prayer when he was a teacher in Kenya. Or the likes of Lance Lambert who said in the 1980s, he, he, he said, in this phase, the old and powerful nations will become as if they are third world nations. Superpowers will no longer be superpowers. But countries such as India and China will arise to take their place. Isn't that what, what is happening today? This man saw it many years ago. Number four, seasons. Watchmen know and understand times and seasons. They don't just know and understand times and seasons. They work with God to change times and what? Seasons. They know the one who made the clock. And, and this brings me to, to, to something I call a gestation period or, or, or a season of response. In Daniel 2, 19 to 22, it says, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in what? A night vision. <laughs> there are some secrets that you will not get if you limit yourself to only one way of hearing from God. Verse 21, and he changes the times and the season. And that's what? He removes kings and raises up kings. Verse 22, he reveals deep and secret things. There's a dimension, there's a place that if you don't, if you don't find that place, there's an hour of prayer. And let me tell you, that hour of prayer in the, I don't, is it the third or fourth, the, the, the last watch of the night from like 3 a.m. Listen to this. This is me personally. I don't do warfare in that season. That is the season I, I just stay quiet and listen. Warfare, I'm not saying everybody and their own. What I'm saying is, the, after you do the warfare, uh, you bind all the witches and all of that. But after the witches have gone now, uh, hear God now. What is God saying? And listen to this. It is in that night, that period, they started telling them, telling him, what they are going to do to the king. Daniel had authority over the king. Time will not permit me. A lot of us these days, if they say, let's go to one government house, everybody will wear a suit and go. Because the king we see is Ahab. But there are some people, they meet with the king of kings. And he determines which king stays and which one goes. And it is you that he will use. Let me tell you, show you the skill God gave Daniel. When it is time, you know, I don't fret. Apostle, don't fret about who rules any, anywhere. Listen to this. Anybody can rule anywhere. So far, the king of kings is still on the throne. He knows what is happening. And <laughs> let me not even go that direction. Daniel was a simple man. He didn't go for any political campaign, no whatever. It came to him. It came to him in such a way that God spoke to the king and gave him a, a, a dream. And he looked for Daniel. And in that day, this is this. Daniel gave the interpretation with so much skill. This is where I'm going to. It says, in Daniel 4, 26 to 27. And it says, And in as much as they gave command to leave the stump and the root of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you. After you come to know that heaven rules. Can you see how he's talking to the king? Using his own dream to talk to him. And he says, Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break 
off from your sins by being righteous and your iniquities, by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. The dream that came to Nebuchadnezzar was a dream of judgment. But let me say this to you. Also, those of us who are pastors or prophets who are trigger happy, who are always pulling that, no, 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 no. There was a wisdom God gave Daniel. And in the wisdom, there was love. God created an opportunity for repentance. There's perchance God may preserve your kingdom. The point I'm trying to make here is this. Once he had the dream, as it were, heaven had more decreed it. But you know what? There was a season of response. Repentance to change. The problem, when we have dreams, whether it is a good one or, or what seems like an evil one, listen to this, there's always a season of response. That's why Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may what? Sift you as we, but I have what? Prayed for you. But then you go into the place of God, develop your strength. You pray. Then he went one, two, three times, told him after a while, he said, don't bother praying anymore. That season has passed. When, when there's a bad dream or there's a, bad, a negative prophetic word, there's always a time for to shift it. We call it the, it's an incu, a gestation period. When a, a woman is not pregnant in one day, she conceives in a day, it takes nine months. Listen to this. Many of the things that we see as negative happenings, even when uh, evil rulers come up, listen to this. It, they started as pregnancies while you and I were sleeping. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and did what? So it's not in the day of election that you, is this making sense? When we see calamities, it happened long ago. The reason why you and I are just hearing about it is it has happened before. Job, all the calamities that happened to his children, he missed a council meeting. Ask your neighbor, say, are you still sleeping? Uh, sake of time. I guess it will take me to the last point. I'll just join it together. Scope. <laughs> the, 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 the scope is this. Listen to this. God will reveal things to you based on your remit and your jurisdiction. What that essentially means is that he will not, he will not reveal things to you beyond you. Scope is every watchman has his station, his scope, and his fear. Watchmen have a grace for the place God has, has called them to. Paul put it this way, he says, We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of our sphere. Let me say this to you. Many pastors have spoken into the political realm that it was not their business to speak into it. And that's why there's a lot of confusion. Listen to this. It will amaze you. I mean, Apostle knows, I get revelations. Ask him, I've kept for 20 years. Didn't share once. You don't need to prove anything. Let me try and cover both scope and, and, and season at the same time because I haven't finished the, the thing about season. In, uh, in, in the last few, and when we talk about scope, it is when you are faithful, it's God, everybody has a scope. You have prophetic oversight over your own life <laughs> you are responsible for you have oversight over your family you, you know if there's a family member you, you know God will reveal it to you you have prophetic oversight you may not have in the church so stop trying to tell the pastor the pastor how what, what you are seeing you can tell him but he may not take it except he's seen that you are a proven a proven uh, a prophetic person the point I'm trying to make is this and I say this just to buttress my point. Last week, we had what we call seven days of breakthrough, praying every day on, you know, on social media. And on Tuesday, I just stopped and I said, I had Slovakia, Slovakia, Slovakia. I said, who has the connection with Slovakia? I said, let's pray. The next day, I, in fact, on that, this is how ignorant you, you, you will know that I am. I said, is there still a country like Slovakia? The next day, people just started sending me text. They just showed him whatever Slovakia said. I said, oh, well, 
Uh, it's, uh, I'm just a friend of God and God just passed this way and said, shall I hide from this man what I am doing? This last Sunday, two days ago, as I was ministering again, I heard Slovakia, Slovakia. Then the Lord said, no. I'm, something is about to happen again that is like Slovakia. So I paused and stopped. I said, what are you doing, Lord? The Lord said, there's a spirit of assassination that is going to be released. And I, oh, it's, it's on social media. I declared it. I said, there is somebody, there's a great, a significant person that is about to be assassinated. It was recorded at 2.22 p.m. It was said by 3.18, the crash of the Iranian president. What am I saying? I'm not saying that to say I'm, I am anybody important. I'm just saying that I've been faithfully in a little. And God is, I am nothing. God is looking for people who, who he can say, who can I say this to? And who will do something about it? Who is not looking for their gain? Let me make this last point. When we talk about seasons, there is a season of response. We see, when you go back, you will look at in the book of uh, uh, um, um, Daniel 4. It says, and in as much as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree. No, sorry. Verse 28 of Daniel 4. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. Which means it was specified that he had a 12-month period and he didn't change. He began to boast. They cut him down. The question is that we are never told how long your pregnancy is. I used to be very close to Dr. Miles Morrow. I had a, a, a dream about him. Ten years before his, his passing. I saw a plane. I saw, oh, my time is up. God bless you. Thank you very much. Let's stand up. Let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Let's thank him. Let's appreciate. Let's lift up our voice and, and, and say, Lord, we have come to live a life of prayer. Lord, I refuse to pray in monologue. Matada bado soto pakata, rosoto pades, zete kede. Can I have a worship leader very quickly? Manta sete sete prato soto para. Thank God that Apostle is a man of the Spirit because my plan was to to not just preach but to inject. You know, we talk about injecting a prayer virus. By the grace of God, I have come to inject a pro prophetic virus into you. So that your prayers will not just be prayers, but it will be prophetic prayers. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your eyes and your heart in prayer we're going to use Zechariah chapter 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 1 from verse 17 16 17 that was the Bible says uh, 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 I will yet again comfort Zion you know and that I will rebuild Jerusalem my city shall yet overflow through prosperity and, and and so there was a prophetic word sensitivity concerning good things God was going to do but then the the, 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 the prophet that says then I lifted up my eyes then I saw what four horns and what did they come to do? These are the horns that came to scatter Judah, Jerusalem, so that ma no man would lift up his head. Listen to this. Some of you have heard great prophecies. You are, you've only seen the sensitivity of the good that is coming. Let us pray that God will open our eyes so that we can see the horns passing out against us and deal with the horns. Open your mouth and say, Lord, open my eyes. Matorobata. Rekapatuske. Ranta lebrato, ve ebrata sike, ma upa lebra, meto sopra takata, shakepa. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. Open your mouth and pray. Mare sike, 
Roboto Paka. I was Sopopo Paraka. Repatu Para. Ma Aika Lebra to Soparabara. You highly lifted up. Mato Porobata Sata Catapados. Shining in the light of your Open your mouth of it. Carabaros. Mato Soparacata City. Pour out your power. Repatu Paracata Roboto Paracata sing. Holy, holy. Hey, 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 hey. Don't just pray. Listen. Please. So when you pray, listen. So that Rhoda, so that Peter will not knock and you miss the knock. I saw a vision of somebody. There's somebody here. I mean, you might understand it. It's either it's a totem or, or something in your family or something, or you see it in a dream. It's a hyena. You understand? I mean, when you see hyena, you understand there's something about a hyena in your family. Just put up your hand wherever you are if you can. Yeah, come forward. Marosa Takata. Who, who, did you have a dream or something? When was that? 2019. And what was it about? What did you say about the hyena? Come here. Come, come st stand here. Stand here. Stand here. Who has a connection with Auchi? Auchi. I didn't say come out. Just put up your hands. Auchi and this person also has a connection with the United States of America. Is that you? Yeah? Is that where you live? Huh? That's where you live. Do you know anybody in the Boston area? Boston. Who's in Boston? Your what? Your ex-wife. Come here. I hear Yahaya. Yahaya. This person has a connection with like Otupo or is it Otupo or Otupa? That area. So for sake of time, we'll just do what we're. We, 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 and, um, <laughs> The prophetic ministry is uh, the word wait, wait, eh, is what makes the prophetic ministry work. <laughs> you know, so when you do it in a compressed time, it's uh, we, I just de we depend on God's mercy. Somebody had a dream, and they, in the dream, also, they saw something like drinking palm wine. Come forward quickly. I said quickly, please. My time is going. Now, this person in particular, when you have the dream, is it you drinking palm wine or somebody else? You drinking the palm wine? Do you drink palm? Do you drink it? Okay. See, these are all serious cases that <laughs> need some, you know, it's like surgery. But we'll just do some quick first aid. Yeah. Yakubu. Huh? Otupo. I say Yahaya. I said Yahaya, but, but stay there. Where's that gentleman? No, 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 that guy that came out. Come, come, come. As I walked away, the Lord said to speak, I saw blood all over you. We, said, we need to pray against some kind of ghastly accident and stuff like that. 
Have you lost anybody in an accident? Yeah? Somebody almost died. When? When? Okay. You are with Yahya in Otipo. And you were praying for him yesterday night. His son. Are they Christians? Is there a John in that family? Come. There's also somebody who has a connection with the Air Force. I hear a name like, it's almost like Olubambi or something like Olub, something to that effect. Olu, Olu, um, something to that effect. And this person has a connection with the military. Okay, let me just try and deal with this. Is my time up already? Okay. Are you doing it? Huh? Air Force? What's your rank? You govern your life well. Good Lord. There are some things you don't say. Are you a member of this commission? <laughs> there are some things that you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say in public like that. But um, watch this space. I don't know how many years it will take. But your name has been penciled down. If it doesn't go to you, it will go to one of your friends, chief of air staff at some time in this nation. You just need to prepare yourself. Pray. Pray. Prepare yourself. Um, and then go and hide yourself. Sir? Huh? Oluwawa? Are you in the Air Force? Why did you take your time? Come this way. Is there a group captain you work closely under? Group captain that you work closely with? Do you know anybody in the training side of the Air Force? Training, like teaching. Just stay there. Uh, my time is going. Let me let me quickly deal with these people. Where's that lady? Stand up, please. Let's worship him for a minute because there's too much attention on me, and I want us to put our attention on Jesus. Daddy, power, my daddy, daddy, your baby, baby is singing. I will be singing and dancing and chanting for, for the rest, rest of, of eternity. eternity. My daddy, my daddy, my daddy, my daddy, your baby is singing. Yeah, I will be singing and dancing and chanting for the rest of eternity. My daddy, oh, my daddy, my daddy, my dad, your baby is singing. Yeah. For the rest of eternity, till we meet, it's only you. Till the end is only you. Till we meet, it's only you. 
of a few of you of you that God interrupted my flight and brought me. Let me say this. Lift up your hands. Wherever you come from. I don't know where you come from. Yeah? The people in that area were diviners. Divination. What area are you from? Yeah? They are diviners. Yeah? And, and the covenant that they had you know, is such that they, 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 they idol, they worship hyenas. You know that. Come. Anytime you see it, you faint. Okay, so I've diagnosed. Pastor will do the surgery afterwards. Apostle will do the surgery. <laughs> yeah. Sir, what I will just say to you is that your life, <laughs> your ex wife, they, I don't know what the complications are, whatever, eh? but the problem is there's this, there's this, like something like a snake, as a snake between you and that woman. A snake. A snake. I don't mean to scare you or anything. It's a spirit, yeah? And listen to this. Thank God you are still alive today. The contention is not, a, it's not the woman. If you could deal with that snake, hmm? and even, listen to this. <laughs> That thing was, was supposed to so deal with you that you will just be with your underwear and slippers. I will pause there. You will continue. Where's, where are you? There's somebody else. Let's give the Lord a powerful hand clap. I think God has done that. He will finish the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. 